Currently at um, the RWTH University in Aachen. Um, yeah, he's currently right now working towards his uh, PhD degree at the Fraunhofer Institute of Telecommunication at the Heinrich Wills Institute, right here in Berlin. Um, yeah, his research interests are yeah, basically motion estimation and prediction and residual coding, and he's uh, yeah, contributing to the upcoming HPVC standard um, is also the editor in chief for the community, community draft document. So, um, yeah, welcome, Benjamin Boss. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Uh, yeah, hello from my side, and welcome everyone to my talk. I'll talk about which most of the structures Jens and I have already presented in this keynote this morning. So, I will keep the introduction of the uh, Brown Hooper HHI tools short and like focus on the results of the, uh, each tool. So for the outline, first a very short introduction on HGBC. We already, uh, I, I guess most of you are already familiar with what HGBC is. Then I talk a bit more about the quadrant partitioning, so the block structures in the, in the HGBC standard. Um, move on to prediction block merging, that's the, the word merge you read in previous slides, uh, our techniques in transform block coding, and at the end, it will now be the main focus of my talk about the simulation results. Uh, and ending with a conclusion. So, just a short <laughs> revision of uh, uh, history of video coding. So, starting with Motion JPEG in the 90s uh, until H264 ABC in 2003. We have a reduction of 75% uh, in bitrate for the same quality here. It is uh, 35 uh, dB in PSNR. And this is the target. We already heard it uh, some. <laughs> um, we already heard it that it's uh, aimed to, to reduce the bitrate by 15%. Uh, so this is um, where we are going to. Um, as uh, Jens already uh, told you this morning, there have been a call for proposals and Fraunhofer HHI proposed a solution and that was ranked after objective and subjective evaluation among the five best performing uh, proposals and therefore uh, the key techniques of this proposal has been integrated in HGBC. And I would like to present the three main features, which is the quadri block partitioning for prediction and transform. Uh, the prediction block merging technique and improved techniques for transform block coding, so transform coefficient coding. Uh, the two milestones, uh, we, uh, we, the first one we recently uh, met in July at the Draft International Standard and the, uh, the standard will be finalized in, in January next year uh, with the final Draft International Standard and ITUT consent. So this is the well-known block. Uh, flowchart of uh, hybrid video coding and I start with the block partitioning which like first uh, subdivides the picture into blocks for further processing uh, in yeah, prediction and transform but I will go to that later. So the picture is divided into code and tree blocks and the standard configuration is uh, 64 by 64. Um, the code and tree block is the root of a coding uh, quad tree see here, the, uh, it's always divided into four equal parts, uh, and so on. Uh, the leaves of this uh, coding block tree are the coding blocks, uh, and the coding block also defines the prediction mode, so whether it's interframe predicted or intraframe predicted. Uh, the processing is that scan order. Uh, here's, I think, uh, interesting example because it's always said that HEVC is uh, aimed or targeted to resolution to HD resolution and beyond HD, let's say 4K. So here's uh, a sequence, it's a 4K sequence traffic, and this is uh, in our test set cropped to like, about 2K. So this is just a detail of the 4K sequence. And when we put now the coding block tree, or oh, let's, let's look, this is I hope you can see it, the blue, the blue blocks are the coding blocks, so this is the quadruple partitioning of this uh, 4K sequence. And these blocks here are 64 by 64. And if you compare, these, these blocks are quite small on this, on this sequence. If you compare it to 16 by 16, uh, for example from H264 ABC, that would be like these small guys here. So, uh, 
you know, the detail. Uh, here you can see one of the advantages that it's adapting to, to the image content. So when you have like edges here, you see that the portrait breaks down into smaller parts. So easier represent these edges or the contours of the car. So then the coding block is further split into prediction block partitions. For example, these uh, rectangular partitions we already know from APC. Uh, and there's another nested core tree in the, in the coding block uh, that is the residual core tree or RQT uh, that starts another core tree inside the coding block uh, for the purpose of transform coding. So these leaves of this nested core tree in red are transform blocks and on, on that granularity uh, on that blocks, on these blocks the transforms uh, are done. This is, for example, one um, exemplary representation of the depth of uh, equal to three. So these are the different prediction block partitioning modes. We already heard about this. These are uh, used in interprediction, and these are used in intra and interprediction. Uh, the prediction mode, as I already said, is defined on a coding block basis. Um, yeah, these partitionings, what's related to the next two. Uh, these inter-prediction block partitions can be merged. This is the next thing I want to talk about. And for the intra-prediction mode, uh, each prediction block defines the intra-mode. Or if it's so, this can be coded into using inter-DC prediction, and this can be intra-angular, for example, 12 degrees, and so on. So each prediction block for intra-mode can have a uh, different intra-mode. So the RQT, the, the residual quadrant we introduced in HABC, um, has variable size transform block leaves, as you can see here, the red ones. And these are there to like, also adapt to the variant spatial frequency, uh, frequency characteristics of the residual signal. For example, you can choose between uh, a higher spatial resolution or a higher frequency resolution, depending on the size of these transform blocks. Uh, the transforms in HEVC which can range from 4, uh, 4x4 to 32x32 uh, are performed on these transform blocks. And another uh, thing to, to highlight is that the intra prediction is performed on the transform block basis. So the mode is defined on a prediction block basis, but the actual intra prediction is performed on these most of the time smaller blocks, the red ones here. And as you can see, we introduce larger transform blocks, so larger transform sizes in the new standard. And these larger transform block sizes require new and improved uh, entropy coding techniques or processing techniques for the transform coefficients for these large blocks. This will be the second thing. So, prediction block merging is an efficient coding of motion parameters. And uh, it's basically taking motion information from neighbors spatial or temporal neighbors and uh, to just copy them. And this, uh, if you do this with a lot of neighboring blocks, uh, this creates regions of equal motion. As you can see here, uh, for example, the, the static background has the same motion or no motion. So this is the largest uh, size you can get from the coding tree block. And so this is one of the drawbacks of the quad tree approach. And you cannot, like, jointly code uh, leaves of two parent coding tree blocks because you start at the coding tree block and you cannot yeah join these uh, join the the leaves of the two core trees here. So but with merge you can do that. So this compensates for the drawbacks and yeah you see all the, the, the background which has the same motion if you just signal the motion parameters for one block and just copy it for the other blocks, you have one region with the same motion parameters and only uh, signal the motion vectors once. So this is a very effective stream of uh, signaling motion parameters. Then the transform block coding or transform coefficient coding, especially for large transform blocks we recently introduced in HGBC. Um, this is again a coding. Uh, tree block partitioning into coding blocks. Then one coding block, the one on the bottom left, is 
further subdivided into transform blocks. And for to process these transform blocks, uh, or the, the coefficients in, inside this transform block, these are further subdivided into sub blocks of four by four size, and then uh, these are scanned. These sub blocks, uh, and as, as uh, Omar already said, six line scan is not an HEDC standard anymore. So we now have the um, diagonal scan, horizontal scan for four by four and eight by eight. Uh, intra blocks and a vertical scan. So this is on the processing and scanning of the coefficients. Now comes the entropy coding part. Basically, it's uh, Kavak. The core engine uh, is the same as in H.264 uh, IPC, but the truncated columnarized codes we introduce, introduced in the binarization reduces actually the number of context coded bin, and that's what already said uh, that it increases the parsing throughput compared to the H.264 ABC cover version. And then we have a, a template-based context derivation, which also increases the, the coding performance and all that, so a superior performance uh, for that CAVAC and an improved throughput uh, led to the decision to have only one entropy coder in HBC, and that's CAVAC. So, and, uh, in H264 ABC, we had CABLC and CABAC, and HEBC only applies one entropy coding method. That makes also the standard text much simpler. So, now yeah, we come to the simulation results. And yeah, the software I used to generate these results is the, uh, the test model 6.0. Uh, the, the, the common conditions for that test model and Oh, there should be three configurations. That's an intra configuration, a random access configuration, and a low delay configuration. So, random access allows a random access uh, with an intra picture coded every, around every 1.1 seconds, and the low delay has no structural delay, so no picture reordering. It's suited for applications like video uh, conferencing. So, what I did is uh, I took the, the HEBC reference, it's HM 6.0 software, and uh, success, successfully uh, <laughs> uh, turned off each tool one after another. Uh, so they added up. So the first tool uh, we introduced, I, I turned off is the merge, the intra prediction block merging tool. Uh, of course, for the intra case, uh, because it's an intra prediction tool, there's no difference. Uh, but for the random access and the low delay case, um, by just turning off the block merging, we get uh, a 5 to uh, up to 7% loss by turning that tool on, uh, turning that tool off. Then, in addition to that, I, turn, I integrate the ABC transform coding and not our improved uh, transform coefficient coding technique. This loses another. Uh, this is the, the grey one. This loses another to five between 10% uh, overall. And then I turned off the residual card tree. This is the green one. So again, more loss. And at least when I configure the, the HEBC software to have 16 by 16 coding tree blocks, as I like, have an ABC, so that's the, the largest block you can have, the 16 by 16, then I have the most loss the red bar here. So I lose up to like 35% uh, uh, bit rate when I turn all tools and introduce off together. So this is like to show where we are. This is the uh, red curve is HEBC with all tools on and uh, the green curve is uh, H265 high profile. The different of, for that sequence, Johnny uh, 720p sequence um, for low delay B configuration, we can see actually the 50% bitrate reduction. Uh, the results are from a study from Microsoft, uh, which can be found in that JCTBC document. Yeah, so um, let me summarize the, the simulation results. So objectively, taking the last study of H.264 and H.E.B.C. into account, 
I just mentioned. Uh, we have an average 30% of newer numbers that uh, it's going to be presented this morning are to an average 35%. This is objectively based on PSMR, but subjectively the evaluation we had uh, uh, give a bit rate reduction over 15%. So this is what's coming because people are watching video. Uh, optimized uh, decoder, which I think this was already discussed after a question. Um, can achieve real already can achieve real time decoding of uh, 1080p video at 60 hertz, uh, running at 7 megabytes per second on one single core. So single core software decoding in real time is already possible. There's an upcoming journal paper on the transactions in circuits and system on video coding, and the special issue in December, which talks about complexity. And yeah, so we introduced the coding quadri, residual quadri together with prediction block merging for interprediction and large transform block coefficient coding for uh, so transform coefficient coding techniques for larger transform blocks. And this improved the throughput and all overall all we ended up with having one entropy coder that was kind of we already introduced in H264. So thank you. Thank you, Benjamin, for the talk. Um, um, are there any questions in the audience? Yeah, over there. for each block and then merge them together. Would it be a good idea to get the optical flow in advance and then get maybe better boundaries for, for, for flow regions? Yeah, uh, of course. The, these are approaches that are uh, not leading to the same results. Um, but in standardization, um, and this was adopted into the standard, there are a lot of hardware guys and they're saying, okay, this is this is very nice, but we cannot afford to put it on silicon. So <laughs> that's that's always the trade-off you have in standardization because people there should be products using this technique. And if you introduce like optical flow or like complicated techniques, um, that's hard or that's hard to get it in because hardware people always say this, this costs so much gains. And uh, so and this actually. Um, from the encoder, so the most complicated thing from the encoder side is just try out some neighboring vectors and just copy the best one. Okay. And this is like simple and effective. And uh, yeah, the, the other one for, for the academic uh, area, there are a lot of more techniques to to to, to amplify the, the gain and to, to make it more efficient, of course. Okay, thanks. Yep, yeah, there's another question in the back. No motion or the same. Uh, so, how do you send the motion vectors to the decoder? I mean, mm -hmm. good, good question. There is a bigger block here. So, yeah. how does the decoder yeah. know the edges of this block? Yeah, unfortunately, we had to put too many techniques into the standard, so I have to be a bit short on that one. Um, uh, I, I can talk like half an hour on block merging. <laughs> Uh, but basically, you're asking for the signal, like how you signal the motion vector. So, for the first block that's like seeding the motion information, you just signal it using motion vector prediction and the motion vector difference. For the other blocks that are copying the motion information, you just signal one flag saying this prediction merge mode is used. And after that one flag, you signal an index to a list of potential candidates. You say, okay. And I signal a one, that means that the candidate uh, to the left is used, and then the motion information from the candidate to the left is used. So you just signal one flag that the block is merged, and then you have to signal an index uh, that uh, from which neighboring block the motion information should be copied. So you need an extra bit. 
Yeah, 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 but if you compare one zip and one index uh, with a like sophisticated entropy coding compared to, uh, for example, two motion vector predictor indices and two motion vector differences, that saves you a lot. Okay, so we have one more very last question. Okay. So, what kind of motion estimation do you apply? Is it just for for the general interpretation, um, uh, you do a, a block matching algorithm. Basically, one uh, that's, that's a search that's taken from the SVC software. Uh, but the block merging does not do a search. The only search that the block merging does is uh, to compare the rate distortion cost of every candidate. So, for example, you have the neighboring candidates here. Um, these are the, the spatial candidates neighboring for that block, for example. And then you just take the motion information from the top left, from the left, from the above, and from the top right, and see which of these neighbors is performing the best. It's just like four tests you have to do, and then you just index and signal uh, the, the neighbor that's performing the best in a rate of torsion sense. So it's a Post-processing step after the motion estimation. No, it's done with the motion. You do motion estimation and get your motion vector, and then you have to signal the motion vector. And that costs you a lot of bits. Signal the predictor and the motion vector difference, uh, and then you try. Okay, maybe I can get the motion vector, the reference index, uh, and all that from the neighbor, and then you compare that uh, right distortion costs of the. Uh, just signaling the merge flag and the merge index to uh, compare to what it would cost to signal the motion vector difference, the motion vector predictor from the actual motion search. So the, the search algorithm. Okay. Okay, so yeah. Thank you, Benjamin, for your time in your talk. And um, let's thank you. Yeah.